Good morning. We will go through heat soaking. The session is about heat soaking of glass. So, objective of the session will be to understand uh, strength of the annealed glass. As you know, the annealed glass we have learned through the float process. The uh, annealed glass is produced in the float bath and it is cooled at a very slow rate in annealing layer of float. The purpose of annealing of a glass is to have a uniformity across uh, core and center of the glass. And we will also learn about what is fully tempered glass and how do we go through this tempering process and what it makes an impact with it. Then we will go in detail on the heat soaking and we also learn about the glass failure modes. So, to start with, we will start with the strength of annealed glass. The strength of annealed glass is basically it has an insufficient strength, tensile strength of the metal because of the surface loss. You know that the annealed glass will go through the tin bath. So, it is the process of float making is having the glass floated in the tin bath. When you take out from the tin bath and put it on the uh, lift out roller and then further processing in the annealing layer, the bottom side that is the thin side of the glass will have the micro floss. The thin side of the glass is always having a micro floss compared to the air side of the glass. So, the, there are two stresses which we normally talk about. One is the tensile stress of the glass which is 45 uh, Pascal and also there is a stress which is on the surface we measure it using gasp instrument it is to 20 to 25 mega Pascal. The treatment of the glass will make it more greater resistant to the mechanical and the thermal stresses. So, basically the glass strength depends on the following parameters one is the surface condition and the edge quality. So, the surface condition when we talk about surface condition it is about the surface suppose there is an acid edge glass or a uh, sandblaster glass the, uh, the stress levels are quite low and also on the edge quality where we cut the glass there there is a possibility of stress getting relieved. So, where the cut quality is determines the edge quality the edge quality can be maintained by having proper grinding of glass the grinding of can be from the nature of arising simple arising to chamfer the edges alone or to have a phrase grinding the thicker the glass it is better to have the full face grinder. Uh, second is on the load duration when you install in a building it also depends on the load duration how much time the load is on the glass and also environmental condition when you talk about environmental the extreme conditions which what makes it different basically the environmental conditions with the high humidity with, uh, acidic and alkaline environmental conditions and sometimes with the high wind velocity normally the wind flow and the wind load is what it depends stress distribution on the surface of the glass also determines its um, differences um, and also the size of stressed area. So, if a glass is relatively smaller or a bigger one it has a surface stressed area this size of the stressed area also determine the strength of the glass. Then particular on the glass surface if you has flaws, cracks, chips all that will determine the damage to the glass. Now, why do you temper a glass? Basically, we temper a glass to improve its ability to withstand the stress. So, normally the toughened glass the fully tempered or toughened glass it has 4 to four times the stress of a annealed glass. So, roughly it will take around 110 to 120 mega Pascal forces. Principally it is similar to the any pre stressing process which you use in steel, iron, uh, cast iron all that and uh, it, it, it helps us to improve the breakage pattern. In case if it is an annealed glass you can see, see in the picture the breakages will be sharper in nature and then uh, it will have an injury to the human. So, it is not normally a safe glass. So, the tempered glass will have a breakages which is very small in nature and it is very blunt. So, normally it is measured by having a 5 centimeter by 5 centimeter square and if you count the number of breakages you can have to get 40 pieces. So, this is how the stress uh, uh, glass will qualify as a fully toughened glass. This is called safety glass basically because of the minute particles and the blunt nature which will be relatively low harmful to the humans. So, now we need to understand how it is done. So, principle of the tempering process there are four stages in the tempering. Basically, first the pre cuts anything which you need to do that the drilling of glass, geometry cutting of the glass, chamfering the edge of the glass. Uh, the precise size after tempering we cannot be able to do any cutting of glass. So, the pre treatment everything which is related to that including drilling holes, cutting glasses to the required sizes, treating the edges everything has to be done before that and primarily the cleaning of glass is very critical. 
because chips everything will get flexed into the glass and forms a permanent defect in the glass. So, glass has to be clean as much as possible. This applies both to the normal glass that is the clear glasses and the low E coated glasses. The emissivity in the glass makes the glass tougher to temper. In the lower the emissivity of the glass, it is more tougher to temper because of the reasons that this emissivity, lower emissivity means it has higher reflections toward the in infrared radiations. So, the next stage it goes to the oven where it is getting heated up. The normal temperatures will, will be in the room temperature will be 30 degrees to, and it has to cross the TG that is a glass transition temperature which will be greater than 650, 600 degrees Celsius. From 600 degrees Celsius it is cooled in cooled very fast that is called quenching. So, this is uh, basically done to have a create a difference between the top and the core temperature. When you quench the glass faster, the top cools faster and the center remains hotter. So, this implies a compressive stress on the top of the glass which makes the glass tempered and what we have seen in the last slide, it makes the glass to break into smaller pieces when it is subject to that. The clear thing idea here is to the heating of glass has to be well above the glass transition temperature and it should be rapidly cold. So, the heating of glass has to be uh, above the glass transition temperature and it has to be rapidly cooled to ambient temperature. When you say rapidly cooled, the normal quench time is only uh, 7 percent of the heating time. So, the, so roughly for thickness of 6 mm glass, the heating time will be anywhere in the range of 250 to 300 seconds and the quenching of time will take place only 20 to 25 seconds. After that, it is only cooling of glass to the room temperature which is only for handling and other related issues. So, the temperature which I was talking to you was about the glass transition temperature. This is the key temperature. Any glass tem heating has to be crossed the heating of glass has to cross this temperature and the he heating should be as uniform as possible. Heating should be uniform to make sure that glass is flat after heating it. So, key agenda is the for soda lime glass which we talk about generally called float glass, the heat uh, glass transition temperature will be close to 580 degrees Celsius and we normally measure the air temperature in the tempering machines. So, normal air temperatures will be around 650 degrees Celsius so that it ensures the glass temperature is measured. After the glass of coming out of the heating zone will be measured using a pyrometer to understand the heat distribution. The quality of tempering depends on the uniformity of the heating and how uniform we are able to cool it in the heat it in the tempering process is more critical for its quality of both optical and the tempering quality. So, this is a temp typical tempering machine. Normally, glass will be loaded in this direction and, and once the glass is loaded, it goes to the oven where we have the electrical heaters. We, we norm this will heat the glass from room temperature to 650 degrees Celsius and it exits the temperature, the quench zone and cooling zone. It is also quenching and cooling. So, the first 20 seconds of it will be the vital period where we have a quenching process and then it is cooled to the room temperature and gets unloaded from this post. So, if you see how it performs to the glass, the glass loaded will be in the room temperature around 30 degrees Celsius and then when it goes to the heating temperature, the glass temperature will be roughly 605 to 630 Celsius at the surface at which we measure and then it is cooled first to uh, cooled at a faster rate in the quenching area and then finally cooled to the room temperature room roughly 45 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius where it can reside and then handle manually. When we cool that as we already discussed there is couple of things which will happen the top surfaces of the glasses will get colder faster and the center glass will remain hot still. So, it, it means the top will be lower in size compared to the center which in later stage when it gets cooled it forms a compressive over the surface and the surfaces remain compressed in that. So, there are three graphs when, when you see the, there are two majorly which has been defined. One is heat strengthened glass. The heat strengthened glass and has the same principle of heating. The heat strengthened glass is similar to the toughened glass, but it is two times the stress levels of annealed, twice x the stress of annealed glass. This is intermediate glass which is be available in market. Uh, this is not called safety glass, but it is better to have heat strengthened glass also in kind of uh, facade application. So, when you compare the stress levels of both, you can see a difference in the curves. So, fully toughened glass will have a more compressive strength at the edges which makes the glass breakage 
into particles of sizes less than 1 mm or equal to 1 mm of glass. So, we recap what we have discussed in the fully tempered glass of quenching is makes a difference. So, heating process for fully tempered glass and the heat strengthened glass remain same. So, we heat the glass above the glass transient temperature and quench normally it is the air blow which will have hot air fast air, air blow from the both the sides of the pan from the top and bottom and the distance at which we blow the air depends on the thickness of the glass and the stress levels we are able to measure in it. Then the cooling and stiffening of the top surface will happen and the delayed cooling in the center creates an internal stretch which is we have seen in the parabolic distribution. You can again see in the parabolic distribution if you take a thickness 1 x is the thick, uh, if it is a 6 mm glass roughly uh, 4 mm will have the center tension and last 1 mm at the top 1 mm at the bottom will have the compressive stress. So, this is the distribution which is roughly estimated for the fully toughened glass. So, when you take a timeline, when timeline versus the pro progress of the glass or the stress level change in the glass. So, the first graph shows you the time 0 that is at the start of furnace and the temperature is less than the Tg temperature. The Tg temperature is means that glass transition temperature. So, after 7 seconds when it comes out of the furnace, this is only the quench graph, the graph is meant for only quench not for the heating. So, once it is away from come out of the furnace which will be normally greater than 600 degrees Celsius and Tg is greater than 600 degrees, it comes to the next stage where after 7 seconds the top surface you can see is less than the Tg values and the bottom surface both the surfaces are less than the Tg values and center still remains in the Tg. And after 65 seconds you can see the top surfaces and the bottom surfaces which much below the Tg and there is no further uh, stresses possibility and the center core still remains above the Tg values and when you take end of the cycle maybe after some times after you get stabilized cycle after complete cooling and unloading of the glass, the glass temperature will be much below than the Tg and the surfaces will be remain constant. It means all compressive forces which is there will go into the glass. So, there are a couple of advantage of the tempered glass. So, one is this high value of the bending strength when you put the glass in the bending machines and allow the glass to bend. It has a has combination of surface uh, compressive force and tensile force which makes it highly safe glass. Second, the compressive stress is not influenced by the surface stress. Even if you have the surface stresses, the compressive stress will not allow the surface stress, surface cracks to go in, so the flask to go inside and make it difficult. So, the breakage part is fully avoided unless we exceed the force of greater than 100 mega Pascal, then only glass grain crack. The natural fracture is less in terms of this. It can withstand local temperature up to 150 degrees Celsius and change in temperature in any float glass will withstand normally 40 degrees Celsius When you compare to that the toughened glass can withstand up to a change of 150 degrees Celsius uh, in the atmosphere and any overloading or small uh, or damage in the glass will be broken into small pieces which is completely have um, safer for the people who are in and around them. So, so, this is the fracture pattern we have been talking about all these times and there are a couple of disadvantages also with this one is this thermal treatment after the mechanical work. So, we cannot do anything after the glass is tempered. Once the glass is tempered, we cannot do anything on the glass and it is pre-treated glass. So, it cannot be cut into the next size or anything. So, that is one disadvantage we have and normally it passes through a roller where it have a much, much higher deformation when compared to heat strength or annealed glass. Optical distortion will be higher than annealed glass and heat strengthened glass. And most critically, we have a problem of fracture, spontaneous breakages because of inclusion of nickel sulfide into the glass. Now, we will go in detail in understanding the spontaneous breakages and nickel sulfate which is playing a major role in this and the way to come out of it. So, spontaneous breakage even though it is normally associated with the nickel sulfate inclusion in the glass, there are several other reasons also. We can define in three ways, one is this surface damages or any other things, surface cracks, damages and other things which is present in there or some pitching building activity which has happened in this area which had damaged the surface at the point of usage or the foreign bodies such as nickel sulphate in the glass. So, when you talk about nickel sulphate, so first we will go through this illustration A. So, there is an example of nickel sulphate. This is a bubble which is, this is a metal ball which is nickel, nickel sulphate in it and the size of the 
nickel sulfate is normally 100 to 110 um, micrometers. So, it is roughly 0.1 or 0.11 micrometers which can cause a breakage. So, nickel sulfate is a tiny metal ball you can see from the figure and then in terms of breakages if you have to confirm if the breakage is because of nickel sulfate you can see always the nickel sulfate breakages will be associated with the butterfly pattern. So, we call it as a butterfly pattern or air lobe pattern. So, when you closely observe there are four similar to a butterfly it, it, it will break and this is the portion of nickel sulphate which is inside it. This pattern represents there is a metal inclusions and metal can mostly it will be nickel sulphate inclusions. The nickel sulphate gets into the glass basically from the raw materials. Uh, we use sand as a basic raw material for producing glass. So, sand can contain metals heavy metals float by, by and large now has developed more and more sophisticated technologies to remove as much as possible is the metal elements into that. So, example they have a metal detector, they have a magnetic detector, they have any more and more and their equipments they use is nickel free equipments they use. So, more and more now floats are modern floats are with less nickel sulphate corrupted, but still there are possibilities of having nickel sulphate into the glass which is of very 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 0 0.11, 0 0.1 mm size of nickel sulphate. So, the pattern at which it breaks is normally the air loop or a butterfly pattern and this can be 2 or 6, 2 to 6 sides. Currently when the picture represents 4 sides, it can be in 2 sides butterflies, it can be 4 sided, it can be 6 sided in some cases and most of the cases the spontaneous breakages happens just like that in, without any interruption, without people touching anything, spontaneous breakages can happen. But in some occasions this also happens with the minute interruptions like opening a door, closing a door at a higher force is also can add to the butterfly person. But if it is broken because of nickel sulphate to confirm that we need to witness any breakages with this and then you have to remove this metal and analyze in the lab to confirm it is a nickel sulphate is present in it or not. Okay. So, how big the nickel sulphate can be? Usually, it is smallest nickel sulphate inclusion can be of 0 0.05 mm and largest can be of 0.1 mm. We measure it in terms of micrometers. So, 50 micrometers to 100 micrometers is the nickel sulphate. Size. Why it breaks after tempering? Why it does not break in itself? So, to understand that, we need to go in little bit inside the depth. The nickel sulphate we have two phases one is the alpha nickel sulphate and the beta nickel sulphate. So, this phase changes happens at a temperature much lower than, so nickel sulphate has two phases, one is the alpha phase and the beta phase and one phase that is the beta phase is not a stable phase, it is alpha phase which is a stable phase. So, because of this instability, the change in phase will grow in volumes. So, for example, if you see the normal temperatures at which we can go, it is 200 to 260 degrees Celsius, that is a much less than the 369 degrees Celsius, we can see a much higher graph. So, smallest volume can grow in high volumes. This growth in volume which means roughly 2 to 4 percent in the growth in volume will have a differential cooling curve than the glass. If you cool the glass and you cool the nickel sulphate inside the glass, both will have a differential cooling curve which results in the breakages of the glass. This volumetric growth even it is 12 to 2 to 4 percent of it. If you have to put into the glass sizes, it, it causes a breakage particularly when the glass, if you take a glass, if the the glass is having full center normally will have the tensile area, all the corners will be compressive and center will have the tensile area. So, any nickel sulphate in the tensile area will tend to break in higher probability than compared to the at in the compressive breakage. 